Now the one you've probably all been waiting for, because this is the one that most people know the, know the message of Laodicea. And it has to do with water. So if we go back to our picture of the valley, the Lycus River Valley, we have Laodicea has on either side of it those two cities, Heropolis to the north, Colossa to the southeast. And what I want to look at is the water at each of these spots. What does that tell us about John's letter? So the first thing is, we noted last week, we took a little trip over to Heropolis. You see it there, the white cliff that stands out across the valley. And that white cliff is from all of these hot mineral springs that come flowing over down the hillside and they leave that calcium deposit, and it builds up over thousands of years, and it just makes this amazing uh, site. But why do people go there? Because there's hot baths. It's the hot water that comes out. It's also got all the mineral content. They use that hot water for the ISAV, and they use the minerals in there. So the hot water at Heropolis is good. It's good hot water. You go there to relax. You can go there for whatever ailment you might have. It might have medicinal purposes. The hot water is good. So over at Heropolis, we've got hot water. What about Colossa down here? Well, we didn't do this last week, but let's go there real quick. There's the tell of Colossa. Never been excavated, so maybe one day that'll happen. But there's the tell. Here's what I want to point out about Colossa. There's a huge difference in the amount of water that you can find down by Colossa than you can by Laodicea or Heropolis. Why? Well, in that region, that valley, the tallest mountain sits right here to the south of, Col of Colossa. It's over 8,000 feet, and it has snow on it about nine months out of the year, depending, of course, on how much snow you get in the winter. It's the only snow-covered mountain in that, sur that surrounds that valley. Now, what's ge geographically, what you get is you get a ridge line that runs this way, and you get a ridge line that runs that way, and it creates a funnel. And so as the snow is melting off of that snow-covered mountain, it flows from either ridge line and it gets funneled down into the valley towards Colossa. And so as you walk by Colossa, you'll notice it's much greener. It's, there's significantly more the greenery. Now you can see in the background of this picture those very tall mountains that are in the background. Again, tallest mountains in the region. Here's a, here's a picture we're walking along the road. You can see the tall mountains in the background. And what you can't see in that picture is right next to the road is a, is a gurgling brook. And this was in September, so it's the dry part of the season. But there's still a, a freshwater stream running right next to Colossa. So what you find at Colossa is you get mountain runoff of a whole bunch of that snow. And that produces fresh cold water. So Colossa is known for its fresh cold mountain runoff, just like we go to get spring water from the Sierra Nevadas, God willing, if we get enough snow. So if you look here, we've got uh, Heropolis has hot water, Colossa has cold water, and that's what they're known for. And cold water is good. It's very refreshing. It's great for the plants. So everything about the cold is good. Hot is good. Cold is good. Now, what about Laodicea? What about the water at Laodicea? Well, Laodicea was known for its awful water. Let me show you a picture. Laodicea doesn't have a natural spring. They have to get their water from over four miles away. I'll show you where that pipe is. comes out of a spring four miles away. The pipe is built above ground. Now, what happens when the blazing sun is beating down on a pipe for four miles? By the time the water gets to your distribution system, what you're looking at here is the water distribution system at Laodicea. It's where they piped it in, and it would create a fountain where you could come and get water. Now look at, look at how these pipes are crusted up. 
it's totally encrusted. And if you look at this big mass, they're constantly having to rebuild pipes because there's so much mineral content. You thought we have hard water in San Diego. Nonsense. Laodicea, they have to keep rebuilding the pipes because of the hard water. Let me show you this picture. Look at that pipe right there. It's almost completely full. So Laodicea was famous for their lukewarm, disgusting water. There was nothing good about it. Here's another pipe. You can see how that got crust encrusted over time. Here's the whole, or a little bit wider picture of that distribution system, and you can see how they keep building pipes and having to refit it so that they can keep the water flowing. Now, as I mentioned, the water comes from a spring. It's about four miles away, and here you can see on the hillside, those, that's the ancient system that carried the pipe that brought the water to Laodicea. And of course, as I said, when the water is traveling in a pipe that's exposed to the sun, just like drinking water out of a hose that's been laying in the yard all day, there's nothing refreshing about it. Okay, so we get to the letter. This is now we're back to the letter to Laodicea. And what does John say? Well, he says this, I know your deeds, that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish you were one or the other. So because you are lukewarm, or neither hot nor cold, I am about to spit you out of my mouth. Now, that is the epitome of Laodicean water. That you would spit it out of your mouth. Now, this verse gets often translated incorrectly. Because in our lingo today, so church lingo, if you're on fire for Jesus or you're hot for Jesus, it means you love Jesus and you want to move in that direction. What you don't want to be today is cold for Jesus. And so people read this and say, ah, see, John wants you hot for Jesus, but he doesn't want you cold. And that's not the case. So he says that you are neither hot or cold nor hot, I wish you were one or the other. So notice, he's not saying cold is bad. He's, if you can reference, if you can link this to the water, you realize the cold water is good. Cold water is refreshing. Cold water and that fresh wa mountain water are great for the plants. Hot is good. That hot water is good for relaxing. The hot water has minerals that help you, whatever. What you don't want to be is the lukewarm, disgusting water of Laodicea. So we have to pay close attention to that because he's saying hot is good. He's saying cold is good, but you are lukewarm. And I wish you could pick one or the other direction and be good for something. Your wealth is leading you down a path that you're just not even having an impact anywhere. The metaphor of the water of the valley fits right into this letter. Now, of course, he's going to link that, of course, to the Old Testament. So where do we get the idea of, I'm going to spit you out of my mouth? Well, there's two places. I'll show you one. The first one is Leviticus 18. The second one's Leviticus 20. You found almost the same exact verse. But if you defile the land... The land, it will vomit you out as it vomited out the nations that were before you. And then you find the same thing. It's basically saying, if you continue on your path of sin, you'll be vomited out. And he links that then to this disgusting water that's at Laodicea. Thanks for joining us under the fig tree for today's lesson. If you like this video, be sure to hit the like button below. And make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit that bell to be notified every time I upload a new lesson. You can also check out more teachings here at our YouTube channel or at figtreeteaching.com and enjoy learning about the sweetness of God's words.